Hey y'all, this is Options Millionaire, and this is my official trading strategy video. A lot of people ask me to make this video to kind of outline exactly what goes through my mind and what indicators I use and how I really execute my system on a day-to-day -day basis with any trade. So I decided to create this for you. <clears throat> I'm gonna outline my tenants, uh, key pillars of my strategy, and a couple of rules that I follow to keep me in check at all times and keep me from getting emotional and doing stupid stuff. Using this system that I've refined down from eight years of trading, I was able to achieve a 91% win rate over the course of February and March. When the market was very choppy, a lot of people were losing money, I was able to make a 91% win rate. Over this win rate, I was at, I averaged of anywhere between 10 to 20%, sometimes a little more, sometimes a little less. All my losses were minimal because I use this system and stick to it as tight as I can. So I think it's something I can help the general public because I think a big problem is a lot of new traders or anybody for that matter get caught up in over trading, trading too much. They don't know what to trade because they're looking at a thousand different stocks, a thousand different charts. They don't know what, what which way's up. So this system allows you to focus on one thing, SPY. More specifically, SPY options. I'll do another video based on options trading that's a more general broad stroke, but this one I want to focus on SPY options in my system. So we're going to go ahead, and go, go ahead and get into it. So I'm going to be looking for an SPY option always that is five to seven days away in DTE or days till expiration, two to three dollars away in strike from the current stock prices, SPY price. That will usually put me around a two dollar premium call or put. Now I'm looking for that because that's a good litmus test. When I'm looking for the options flow, bam, my eyes go right to that two dollar premium, which narrows it down to that five to seven days, give or take, sometimes more, sometimes less. But that's a nice round number that allows me to make a trade quickly and analyze if that premium is undervalued or overvalued based on current market conditions, and then I go from there. But the biggest and most important in my aspect right now <clears throat> is no holding anything overnight. Because the system right now, because the market is a little wonky and is very sensitive to news and stuff like that, corona news, tax news, um, policy, whatever, that uh, I don't want to wake up to a 50% loss because you can't sell your options, obviously, in pre-market or post-market or post -market trading, so you have to do during the day. So I'm not holding anything overnight. <clears throat> it's purely day trades, close and open during the day. And then, of course, the most important thing of this strategy and any strategy is controlling your emotions. There are no room for emotions in this in this market, in this strategy. Uh, if you need to get that in your system, wake up in the morning, watch some Dr. Phil, get it out, come back, and let's do some trading because there's no room for it here. We go strictly by what the chart's telling us. Uh, the market does not care how you feel. So you have to look at exactly what the market is telling you and what the charts are telling you to make a decision. It's a nice, easy system, streamlined, a couple of good rules to follow. Um, you, know, you can adjust it to fit your own current, for your tolerance of risk, but this is what I like. Some people ask me, why don't I trade shorter DTEs if I'm going to be a day trading because I get more volatility out of it? Well, because if a trade goes against me or if I want to, you know, if I want to let the stock breathe, uh, just norm normal oscillations of the day pricing, I don't want to get stopped out too quickly, or I don't want to. I don't want to face a 20% loss before things go positive. And if you choose a zero DTE or a two DTE, the volatility may do that to you. You may start facing 20% losses if you don't time things just right, and you get stopped out, or you have to go through this, the the crazy emotions of fit, looking at the minus 20% before things go green. So I like to go. My current tolerance for risk puts me at this five to seven DTE, two to three dollar strike price, which allows the stock to breathe during the day and not stop out my options and allows me to go green. And it's worked out me pretty sort of worked out pretty well. When I get a good movement in price, I can easily yield 10 to 20% pretty consistently. And if it goes against me, I can get out quickly uh, without facing a big loss. And uh, if it does go, if it, the price does fluctuate down, it doesn't like the stock won't usually stop me out too often. So yeah, that, that's pretty much it. Nice and easy, straightforward. And I'll elaborate here. Now, the next step is actually going by what indicators I use, which a lot of people ask me. So let's go over my indicators. So I use very simple, very popular uh, indicators that are usually revolve around volume and then price action, which I think volume and price action are the king of all indicators, not pattern analysis, not technical analysis, but volume and price action. So the first one is the 8 EMA, blue line right there, 21 EMA, yellow, hull moving average, pink volume which is, is very common but very 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 important i think the most important indicator a lot of people underestimate it uh that's the simple moving averages i use a very various simple moving averages but i'm just going to highlight the 200 here um, because i don't want to put five different lines up here squeeze momentum indicator there and then rsi i also use macd but i'm not going to highlight in this video because i don't want to clutter up this chart too much 
But in addition to all these, I also use the Fibonacci retracement, which I think is very, very crucial to defining levels. I don't have the Fibonacci up here, but after I explain these, I'll zoom out to the three month and I'll pull a Fibonacci retracement to show you. So I'll start out first and foremost with the eight EMA. That's the most important. Actually, the eight EMA tied in with the 21 EMA is uh, my most important one. And basically what I play with day trading on the five minute chart is uh, the crossover. So you can kind of see here, we'll start out there. The eight is the blue, crosses up through the 21. That would be my first indication. Now I will, I will back step here. No indication, no matter how confident you are in its ability, should be used on its own. Always use it in conjunction with other indicators. The more indicators agree with each other, the more confidence I have in a trade. So here, I'm on the daily five-minute chart. I'll go over time frames later on. Uh, I have all my indicators here. The first thing I'm looking for is the 8 to 21 crossover. So you can see here the 8 and 21 was up and down, oscillating. I don't really care about this movement. I am care about these big moves here, this type of stuff. So here, the 8 and 21 crosses through the, or the 8 crosses through the 21. When it does that, the first thing I'm looking for is, is it going to fail? I don't want to take it right at the crossover because it very well could pop through and then fail and come back down. So I'm going to look for the confirmation of the price action. So this thing pops up, boom, we got a gre big green candle, confirmation, everything is rolling, bright green. So nice and easy. You can come back here, and I'll look for a few indications where it fails. Here's a good one where it fails. Like if you are looking to take a put, the 8 comes down, pops on the 21, price action drops still the 21. You don't want to take a put because it bounced right off. Boom, it came through. Whereas look at here, this is that big move when Biden came out and announced his tax plan. Tanked the market on Thursday the 22nd. Boom, the 828 crossed through the 21, and then down she went. Never actually competed with the 21 again until way on down further in the afternoon. So that would have been a good place to take puts, but it's also based on other occasions, which we'll discuss later. Come back here. Let's see one where it actually failed. Uh, let's come through here. Let's come through here. Uh, oh, here's a good one. Okay, so the 21 crosses up after this downtrend. The 21 crosses up, touches the 21, but look, it fails, comes down, actually comes above, but touches, fails, come down, well, bounces up, and then fails again. So you don't, you don't want to actually take a position here with calls. You want a confirmatory price action, which this is right here is beautiful confirmatory price action. The bulls take over, boom, you got a big old engulfing green candle, and off we go. Great indications. Now, the whole moving average was designed to decrease lag while still maintaining the nice smoothness of a moving average line. Uh, you can see the whole moving average here in the pink line. Uh, I use it for identifying entry points. Uh, it's really good at developing uh, overall trends, whether very quickly or, or in the long term as well. But you can kind of see, um, and the pink line here is the whole, it moves a lot quicker than the 8 and the 21 EMA uh, because it reduces all that lag. Uh, so I, j I just like to use it to kind of give me an indication, hey, you know, it gives me a nudge, hey, things are going south. Uh, I don't use it for crossovers because it it's calculated differently than the EMA, so you're going to give us a false indication if you get crossovers. So I mean, this thing crosses over left and right on the EMA. So I just use it to over to do, identify overall trends, a good entry point. When I see a huge sharp downward turn, like uh, maybe like right here or like right here or upwards, like I know things are trending in the right direction, and I'll uh, I'll look to take a position. The simple moving averages are something that I think every trader has either at least started out in. It's just a it's a tried and true method. Um, this one here I've got showing as a 200 move, simple moving average, and I use that for long-term analysis. So if we're looking out here to the six-month chart, you know, you, that's the Fibonacci right there. But if you see the six-month chart here, you see where every time uh, the price action comes down, it bounces off the 20, uh, 200. It's, it's a great indication uh, where things could go if in the event that the price action approaches the 200. Now you can you definitely see like in order for us to approach the 200, we need a, a significant correction in the market, which does happen. Um, so in order to show you this a little more clearly, I'm going to zoom out pretty far. Uh, this is the one-year chart. You can kind of see uh, we haven't touched the 200 since June of 2020, uh, and we blasted through it through uh, through Corona announcement here. This was March and February, so you can definitely see that. I mean, that a cosmic event brought this thing down. Since then, we haven't touched it. Uh, we've approached it, and since then, we've been off to the races. As we know, 2020 was a crazy bull year. But the big thing that I look at with the 200 is that any time that a stock or an ETF approaches 15% extended above the 200, you can, you can anticipate some sort of downturn in the near future, and that's where we are now. We're actually a little over 16% extended over the 200. And last time we were this far above it, 
uh, quite this far. I mean, we were a lot here, but that's one thing or another. It was uh, back here, obviously, but I don't count this because that was a extenuating circumstance, Corona. That was a natural market phenomenon. So I'm going to go back to <clears throat> January of 2018, which is good. It's a good point here. So here we were pretty far extended above the 200. I mean, here, yeah, but here it was big time. It was about 15%, a little more. And uh, that was January 26th was the highest day. And then, boom, we came right back down and hit the 21. So I can anticipate some sort of downturn. And that's, that's this is just an example of how I use it. I look for 15%-ish to identify a level of extension above the 200. Yeah, that's just a good way to look at this. The volume indicator is a very basic uh, indicator. And I won't spend too much time talking about that. But it basically shows visually uh, the size uh, of the selling and buying in a given period and displays that whether it's in a green or red candle and it's displayed along the I have it displayed along the bottom but you can see here when we have this big sell-off boom you got this big indication of selling volume so this is pretty basic the squeeze momentum indicator right here is one of my favorite indicators it's new to me it was uh brought to me by someone in the discord awesome indicator and uh yeah it, it does a great job of displaying entry and exit points the basic principles of this is that you're looking for Direction one way or the other. So it's a squeeze momentum, which means it identifies when a price action is squeezing and then when the squeeze releases. When the screen, screen, squeeze releases, that means that the price is moving one way or the other. So little black crosses here you can kind of see along the line. That indicates you're in the squeeze, which means that the bulls and bears, the sellers and buyers, are fighting it out. So you see, like right here, uh, you have this kind of sideways price action here. Uh, you got the black crosses. So what I'm looking for is the first indication of the squeeze releasing. In this case, it's releasing to the upside. You see that the the green candles go from dark green. They switch to light green. The light green is my first indication of, all right, I'm looking for a call here because it's going up. Second indication, which would be my buy indication, would be the black crosses turns gray. That means the squeeze has officially released to the upside in this case. And I'm going to be looking to take calls. Now, just like everything else, you don't want to use this alone. You want to use it in conjunction with other indicators. And I'll go over a good process about that earlier, but my, my main crossover is the 8 and 21 with the squeeze momo. My first sell indication would be, a conservative sell indication would be when the candles turn dark green. Some people might wait it out until the squeeze completely re like reengages, which is the black crosses. But conservative exit would be, all right, I'm going to go ahead and take my profits when the... Uh, it's candles turn green. That means buyers are starting to fizzle out and we're going back into the squeeze. And everything is inversely related on the downside. Like if you want to take puts, uh, here would be a good time to take puts as long as the other indicators uh, comply with th with that. Now, I'm going to look for big movements here. I don't really, I don't, I don't want to concern myself with these little things because you can kind of see these little ones don't really equate to much price movement. So I want to wait for the big oscillations here. That's where you're going to get your profits. So, so <clears throat> that comes with the volume. So use that in conjunction with the volume. Use it in, in your in your other indications, and you know just be smart about it. Take your uh, learn to trust your indicators, and this one is a fantastic one to do. On the bottom here, we've got the RSI. RSI is a great indication for rel it's called relative strength. So where's your strength at? Now, um, I've got mine set to a seventy level and a thirty level. And 70 means, traditionally, is that you're overbought, and 30 means you're oversold. So some people look at that like if here, when it starts approaching down to 30, that means it's oversold, and you're going to look for a reversal to the upside. Here, for a good example, we reached overbought, which is right here. Uh, it dropped down below, oversold, and that was about right here. And it continued on down, and then it started to recover upwards, and then you saw the recovery. So if you think if you see things RSI bouncing down here, you can expect some sort of reversal in price movement because it is indicating oversold. Now, once again, use that in conjunction with other indicators. But relative strength, squeeze momo, great things to do and to tie it into your system. Now, last and certainly not least is the Fibonacci retracement tool. And the Fibonacci is fantastic for identifying levels at which the price action likes to act. And this is not necessarily an entry or exit indicator to determine when you want to get in and out, but it does determine where the price could go. So I'm going to pull one here, Fibonacci there. Now, how you pull the Fibonacci is you go, you find a trend, which here is a trend. This this is different. So this starts a new trend here upwards. You, you, you pin the lowest peak of the trend, 
and you go to the highest peak, which would be Friday because we hit just above 418 there. And this identifies the levels in which the price acts. So you can see, and they're identified by the, the Fibonacci sequence numbers, which if you don't know about the Fibonacci, do a little reading. Uh, 1, 0.786, 618.5382236, and of course zero, which is the top level. So you pin it to the top level. You see, the price comes on up, it pops through the first level, and then it uses this level as support all the way through. So one, it goes here, one, two, three, four. And we approach it just above it, so right around that 411-ish number. And then now we're, here we are back again. Now, the funny thing about this is that once you peek on this, you can kind of go back to historicals and see how the price acts similarly. And theory suggests that anytime the price peaks, it always eventually comes back down to the 50 level, which is this right here. In this case, it would be 40104. So when the price does downturn, I expect the price to go down to 401, and I will begin to look at maybe a little, little bit longer puts to capture some of those profits. So let's pull another one on this trend, Fibonacci. Let's go to the lowest peak. Let's go up to the highest right here. See, comes on up and pops through, uses a support, come up, hits peaks again, peaks again, and then finally falls, breaks through the first level and comes all the way down eventually to the 50 right here. And we're gonna do it again. Uh, this one's already pulled, so it pulled to the bottom valley, goes to the top. Pops through, use this the first level as support several times. One, two, three, four times before like here pops again, comes up, and eventually falls down to the 50. Right here. Actually blows though blows through the 50 a little bit before starting a new trend. And then uh here, let's do this one. Just pick a random one. Right here, so it comes right down, just didn't quite touch the 50, but approaches it right there. So you can kind of see, this is a good indication of where, uh, mainly I use it for support levels. I see where the price action is forming support at on these levels, and, and then I dial into why that you're using that support, and then where it actually falls down and bounces off of. Which you can kind of see, right around this 50 level is a great indication of where things are going to go. So when this price action does finally break, I will be looking for this to come down to the 400 level. So that's my trading strategy in a nutshell. I know a lot of people ask me about what indicators you use and how I use them, and uh, that's why I want to create this video. So you can kind of come back to this video, um, look through this stuff, and, and figure out how my mind works in any given day. But before we end this video, I wanted to leave you with one list of things that is very important. And in order of importance, people get wrapped up in the weeds. They get wrapped up in all this nonsense and you know, tactical indicators and what's going on. But I think the most successful traders out there will tell you that the volume is very telling. The price action block sells... Uh, the volume will tell you everything you need to know, uh, at least the majority of what you need to know. So the most important thing is volume, price action. Second is market awareness. You need to know how the market's manipulated through news, through media, through social media, through geopolitical events, military events, etc. How does a certain event affect a certain price? How does a, pri a president or a president's attitude or a president's social media affect the price action? So being very market aware is very crucial in developing a successful strategy. And then after those two things, then you can start diving into technical analysis, chart reading, uh, plotting lines, stuff like that. Because once you don't, if you don't have the first two, technical trading doesn't matter because you don't, if, if you're slow, so, solely dependent on technical analysis, then you're going to get smoked if you don't understand why things are doing things in the long term. Why is this market up on a Friday? Why is this market up on a Tuesday? Like why? So you need to understand why those things happen before you get there. But technical analysis is third on those lists. And then finally, unfortunately, there's no way, a quick way to do this, and that's experience. Getting through pay, getting through all the market, the ups and downs, paying what's what I call market tuition. And that is when you do stupid with a bunch of zeros behind it, when you make a stupid mistake and you pay for it big time, that's market experience. Developing that over the course of years is, is paramount. So those four things, volume, market awareness, technical analysis, and experience. And that'll get you an awesome trading strategy that can last generations. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching this video. Please like and subscribe so you can get further updates on the educational videos I'll be posting in the future uh, that'll be pertaining not only to SPY options, but just how to options trade in general so you can be profitable in the long term. Also, please go ahead and follow me on all my social media so I can grow this brand and help as many people as possible. Anyway, guys, thanks for being here. Take it easy. Be profitable. Be smart. See you.